Hey guys, it's Eddie the Magic Monk. How are you going? Um, today I want to introduce you guys to the trapezoidal rule. And just before I introduce it, I want to talk about a real life application of trapezoidal rule. So what is the real life application? So let's say that I give you guys an area of, let's say, a park. Just a random park and this is the top down view of the boundary of this park. And I want to know the area of this park. Area of park equals. Okay, now as you can see, this shape is not really in the form of a shape that we know how to get the area for. It's not a circle, it's not a rectangle. So how would we get the area of the shape? So what we need to do is we need to use a shape that we can get the area for and we're going to fill up this shape with another shape that we know how to get the area for. So the area that we're going to use to approximate the shape is a trapezium. So what is a trapezium? A trapezium looks like this. A pair of parallel sides. So these two lines are parallel, which means they will never meet. Doesn't matter how long you extend them. And then the other two sides do not have to be parallel. And it's a quadrilateral, which means it's a four-sided shape. So this is a trapezium. And we know how to find the area of a trapezium, don't we? Because area of trapezium is just equal to A plus B times H divided by 2. So what's A plus B? The top side is A, the bottom side is B, and H is the perpendicular height between A and B. So perpendicular height. The distance between A and B vertically uh, the perpendicular height. So A plus B times H divided by 2. So we know how to find the area of a trapezium. How would we use this formula to find the area of this random shape? Well, we need a systematic way of filling up this shape with trapeziums. So how do we do that? This is how you do it. You draw a survey line somewhere through the middle of the shape. Okay, you draw a survey line through the middle of the shape. And then what you do is you divide the survey line into an equal amount of segments. Now, depending on the question, the question might say, well, divide it into 10 segments or divide it into 15 segments. It depends on what the question wants you to do. But let's say that the question says we want to divide this into 10 equal segments. So what we what will we do? Well, we've got to know the length of this green line. What is the length of the green line? Well, we need to measure it with a ruler. So let's get a ruler. So the green line is 11 centimeters. Okay, so the length of the survey line is 11 centimeters. Let me just write that down. Okay, so if the length of the survey line is 11 centimeters and we want to have 10 equal segments, that means that each segment is going to be 11 divided by 10 which is 1.1 centimeter. That is the length of each segment if we're going to divide this into 10 segments. 
So let's do that. Let's divide this into 10 segments. So we got each segment is 1.1 centimeter. So every 1.1 centimeter, we're going to create a little mark. So 1.1, 1 1.1 1 .1 plus 1.1 1 .1 is 2.2. 3.3, 4 4.4, 5.5, 6.6. Um, let's speed it up a bit. Okay, so we have 11, um, sorry, so we have 10 segments. Let's just hide the ruler for a second and see if we have 10 segments. One, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Yes, we have ten equal segments. And then what we're going to do is at each mark, we are going to draw a vertical line downwards. A vertical line downwards at each marking. So make sure that these straight vertical lines which we call offsets make sure your offsets are perpendicular to the survey line okay so now what we need to do is we need to find out the length of each of these offsets so i'm going to grab my other ruler okay and i'm going to use that to measure every single side so I'm going to grab this ruler and just uh, measure it. Okay, so I'm going to measure each side. So I go, okay, well, this is probably 4.4 uh, 4 centimeters. So then I'm going to write 4.4 4 next to this line. Um, so wait, where is it? So this side is... Uh, 4.4 centimeters that's the length of this side and then i'm going to measure again um, you can see this is going to take a while so hopefully when you guys do it on paper you can do it a bit quicker so that's 5.6 so then uh, i'm going to write down 5.6 Now, um, I, there is one thing that I forgot to mention is on the end of your shapes. So at the end of these shapes, you also need to draw a vertical line down to where the pink line is. If, if there is, um, if that's possible. So you still need... To draw some lines on the ends okay so I'm just going to write out some more measurements okay so now I have all of these measurements how do we use these measurements to find the area of the pink shape well guys remember the theory that we are using trapeziums to model this pink shape so where are the trapeziums well if you join up the ends of these lines you can see that if I join up all these lot the ends of these lines using straight lines you can see that the boundary of these straight lines is very close to the pink line except this one maybe but all the other ones are very close and then you can see that each of these little shapes are trapeziums that's a trapezium this is another trapezium this is another trapezium why are they trapeziums because all of these lines all of these straight offsets are parallel to each other they are all at right angles to the survey line so because we have all of these trapeziums we can now use 
the formula for the area of a trapezium to approximate the area of the shape. Just let me finish drawing um, the trapeziums. Okay, so how do we use this formula? Well, because we have so many trapeziums, not just one, we need to use a slightly more complicated formula and I will explain where this formula comes from later on but I'm just going to move this formula somewhere else so I can write the bigger formula closer to the shape okay so the trapezoidal rule which is what I'm going to use to find the area of this shape is area equals uh, W divided by 2 bracket H0 you won't know what this means at the moment but pretty soon you will know plus 2 times H1 plus 2 times H2 plus dot 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 Um, plus H N H N now you have no idea what this means at the moment but pretty soon you're going to understand that really well okay so what does this mean let me just put a little divider here so it doesn't get mixed up so all it means is W is the width between each segment so w equals width of each segment okay so what is the width of each segment uh 1.1 we calculated that before okay so ne next uh a is area obviously a is area just in case you guys didn't catch that H0 and HN are the lengths of the ends the end offsets so where are the end offsets they are these lines the ends so what are the ends we got 1.2 and 1.3 so h0 is 1.2 h1 is 1.3 okay so what's h1 h2 h3 and so on they are these numbers here so that is h1 that is uh Sorry, that shouldn't say HN. That should that shouldn't say H1. That should say HN. Okay, so that's H1. That's H2. That's H3, H4, and so on. So now we can fill up this formula by putting in uh, W is 1.1 divided by 2 times h0 is 1.2 plus 2 times now instead of going 2 times h1 plus 2 times h2 plus 2 times h3 you can just go plus 2 times the sum of all the distances from here to here okay so 2 times 4.4 plus 5.6 plus 6.2 plus 6.2 plus 6.5 plus 6.5 plus 6.3 plus 5.8 plus 4.7 okay so all that middle bit is taken care of that middle bit is this bit here plus H N 
that is 1.3 and that is on the outside so that's not included in this two times bracket okay and then finish off the bracket okay so now we just need to type all this stuff in and then the area will come out okay so it's 1.1 divided by 2 times brackets 1.2 plus 2 uh, 2 times brackets 4.4 uh, plus 5.6 plus 6.2 plus 6.2 plus uh, 6.5 plus 6.5 plus 6.3 plus 5.8 plus 4.7 okay and all of that is included in a bracket plus 1.3 at the end finish off the bracket okay and let's check our calculation so that seems all right so just press equals all right and check it one more time 1.1 divided by 2 times uh, 1.2 plus 2 times all that plus 1.3 um should be right 58.795 now what did we measure these lengths in we measure them in centimeters right all these lengths are in centimeters centimeters so therefore the area is centimeter squared okay so if you guys are interested now I'm going to explain where this formula comes from if you're not interested in that that is the end of the video thank you for watching so where does this formula come from well if we had only one single trapezium okay let's say we only had one single trapezium and it's the one on the end so we call this side a this side B and the height is H okay so then the area is A plus B times H divided by 2 that's if we only had one trapezium okay but let's say we now have two trapeziums so that's C this side here is still H so now we're adding this to h over 2 times b plus c okay and then we have a third trapezium and let's call this side d so then we have plus h over 2 times c plus d and then we keep going okay so what is the common thing in all of these brackets the common thing is we have h divided by 2 so that's why h divided by 2 is at the front and then what are we adding up you can see that a only occurs once b occurs twice so we got 2 times b c occurs twice 2 times c and every single one of these sides is going to appear twice because for example let's say side e that's going to appear twice as well because E is the side length of this trapezium and it's also the side length of this trapezium so that's also going to appear twice so every single side is going to appear twice until the side at the end A, E, C, D, E, F, G, H, I, J, K K is only going to appear once Okay, so that's where the trapezoidal rule comes from. Thanks for watching, guys. See you next time.